I've mentioned how I hate Lightroom many times. And a lot of you have said, but Scott, have you tried the newer versions? The updates are brilliant. It's such good software now. It's not like it used to be. And I hadn't. So I'm going to, we're going to find out which one is better. Now, this is by no means a comprehensive test. It would be so long, you'd be bored senseless. We're going to look at a basic color grade. We are not looking at the AI tools. I had a play with them earlier today. They're both not good enough. You still need Photoshop. You still need pen tool. They're great. Like we use them for thumbnails. I actually use Lightroom regularly to make thumbnails just because of the way my workflow is set up and my archive system set up. But AI is just not there. It's not there. It's not even close yet. They're great tools for people who need to do like social media stuff. But for us professional photographers, AI sucks. I know there'll be things going, oh, but you didn't touch on this. Oh, but the yes, I understand. We're going to do a really deep, boring, dull, monotonous dive into all of this over on Studio Access because that's for the people who really need that like extra 1%. This is a basic grade. The file is identical. It's a RAF file going into both bits of software. I let it do what it needs to do. Just for a quick up top, this is the difference as to what the software sees. This is a unmolested raw file in each one of the softwares. So to start with, people saying they don't interpret the files differently. You're wrong, they do. Um, can you guess which one's which? I don't know. Is it A? Is it B? Can you tell? I've not put them in yet, so I don't know, but it is different. It, the whole, let's dive in. Let's have a look. Okay. So we have both, both softwares open. Now this is, there is no possible test to show you a like for like thing here because they're two different bits of software. It is slightly comparing apples and oranges, but let me just, let's start here. So this over here, this is what Lightroom sees as the file. And yes, there is an Adobe Color Profile applied. This is what Capture One sees as the file. And yes, there is a Capture One profile applied. Well, actually, it's a Fuji profile applied in Capture One. It, it does the native camera, whereas this does Adobe. There is a distinct difference. Exposure is almost identical. We're slightly darker over here. Colors are quite different. And um, this is a starting point. And I mean, to be honest, I could work from either. Um, I do prefer the starting point on this side here, but maybe that's because I'm used to working with it. And I am going to talk about preferences as well. You'll also see the weird way that I edit because it's not standard. Um, it's not like a straight up, right, this is what we do, this is how we do it. We, we do bits and pieces from here and there and all over the place. But let's look at some of the basic features. So they've both selected a white balance based on what the camera saw. They've both interpreted it slightly different. There's a bit more green here, there's a bit more magenta here. Let's just give it both an auto white balance. What's Adobe doing for us? That's Adobe's idea of the white balance. And this is Capture One's idea of the white balance. I mean, it's pretty clear to see that with an auto white balance, this does a better job. But let's go in and take a proper white balance. We'll try and get as close as possible to the same area. I'm just going to take one from, so here's the big bubble, just blow it. And again on here, there's that big bubble, just blow it. So actually this got the auto white balance pretty spot on. There is still a difference in white balance despite the fact we've just selected the exact same bit. See the warmth here? No warmth here. There is a definite difference. Um, same with the reds. The color red is different. So let's try and get that. So when you see in the screen recording, you can see from here to here, it's different. They're different reds. They're different whites. Let's get some beer oranges. They're different beer oranges and they're slightly different exposures. Um, but different isn't necessarily bad. Oh my gosh, they have different commands for zooming in and out. That's going to get frustrating. But there we go. So already we can see a different pink here to here, a different orange here to here, and all the rest of it. I'm going to get this one here. Let's make it big so we're not looking at the other one. Looking as good as possible. So we need to bump a bit of exposure. I'll add vibrancy about there. Uh, we'll push the blacks a little, push the whites too far. I want a little bit of clipping in there. Um, and then we'll bring the highlights down just to retain the detail. Open the shadows all the way up and just pull them down a little bit. A uh, bit of texture. We'll zoom in whilst doing texture and clarity. Bit of clarity. That is too much. Um, and then let's give it a little bit of a sharpening, shall we? Loads of sharpening and then really mask it in round. There we go. Okay, really quick, but that is a basic exposure grade. Let's jump into here and do the same thing. And of course, they're not going to be identical because they can't be. So we're going to push that a little bit. 
you see I work slightly differently in each software. Um, I do this down here, but then what I'm going to do is come up here and just do the whites because I struggle on that little slider. There we go, got the whites in place, but then put the highlights back popping again. There we go. Um, now we're going to come down into clarity. We're going to zoom in. I always add structure first, which is texture really from... And okay, then we add the clarity. Now you see here the clarity works much better. And also, let's give it the punch. There we go. That's too much. So we can ease off if we're doing punch. Um, okay, we're going to have to open up the shadows a bit now. We've got that contrast in there. Then we'll go to refine. I like to use a standard of pre sharpen two. There we go. Um, do we need any color doing? Maybe a little bit, a little bit of extra saturation just to umph it along. There we go. Right. Let's see what we've done. And of course, this is not a scientific test. We're, we're clear on that, aren't we? It'd help if I could do that. There we go. There we are. Is that going to disappear? Have I opened that up permanently? There we are. So we've done the same edit. It's pretty similar. Trying to zoom to the same magnitude. About there, isn't it? There we go. Oh. Now, what looks better it is very hard to say in terms of this is a technically better image. This one here is sharper. This one here has more detail. And, and Capture One is sharper and more detailed. That is, it, there's no, I, mean, I don't know what you can see on your screens, but that's, that's what it is. We've got the same white balance here. The red here is the correct red. This red's gone orange. Um, so that's not correct. And it's the same raw file. The same raw file, why is it orange here? The same white balance points. I mean, the whites are quite similar. I'm going to see if I can just sort of change this a little bit to make it more. Let's take a white from here. Will this help us? That's made it more orange, so it's not from there. So the white balance tool in here doesn't work as well. Auto white balance, custom white balance, and even just if we take the white balance away and just go to as shot, and then if in here we go from custom to shot, we're still getting a different red. We're still getting a different orange and we're still getting a different pink. Now, having shot this shot, shot this shot and edited it already, the colors in Capture One are correct. The colors in Lightroom are wrong. Now, can we correct them? Kind of. Um, so let's dive into here and let's see if we can fix this. Let's just go to our hue shifter. Let's go into here, pick a bit of this orange. Let's see if we can make it. There we go. Now it's red. Now the problem is this is doing it globally, not just to there. So now the beer is the wrong color. But we could go in Photoshop and fix this. Um, same with this pink here. Let's just shift this until it's the right. Now, of course, you're watching a screen recording here. There you go. That's quite... Now, we shifted that, but now obviously the beer is wrong and this is now wrong. But, you know, you could mask all these and do all these huge shifts individually. This is wrong compared to this. This is not the color this was. So we try and get that right. Can we match it? Mm, not really, it's somewhere there, but then we need to remove some of that. Uh, then we need to go into luminance. Yeah, it's not a million miles off. Okay, so we've done that, but then obviously everything else has now changed. So th there are issues in Lightroom. It doesn't do as good a job. I know what this looks like, so we've actually finished a shot in post already. Um, we didn't have to mask any of these individual things out because Capture One just got the colors right. Um, and we did the the white balance. We did a custom white balance um, from a, a from part of this here and then adjusted it to give it the glow we wanted. But these are two very different shots. So all these people going, it's the same thing. It does the same. You can get to the same point. It's just quicker in Capture One and it's better. And, you know, to get this to the same point, we would have had to go into Photoshop, mask every individual item out, change the hues of every individual item, change the white balance of every individual item. You know, the sharpening is not as good as in Capture One, although Photoshop has a very good sharpening tool. Um, clarity and texture is not good in Lightroom at all. I do like the vibrancy slider. We do have it somewhere in Capture One, but you don't tend to use it because the saturation slider works correctly without going insane. If you use saturation in Capture One, let's so bump that back down again, it just goes toxic quickly, which is why they have vibrance. This is like, a, whoa, let's give it everything. And this is, let's just do a normal, normal level. So saturation just works better here. White balance is better. I mean, the whole thing is better apart from, <clears throat> excuse me, we still use Lightroom. We use it for my portfolio. 
Um, because in terms of looking at all your work in one go, I will head into Lightroom. I'll go to open. I'll open an old one so you can't see new work that's not already out there. I think we're already in it. We'll go to here. Um, and we can just take our thing here. We've got all of our work saved in here. All the final images. We need to do a treatment. We need a, a still of an ice lolly. There's my ice lollies. We need some details of pores, whatever it may be. Everything lives within this one catalog. So when we're doing treatments, it's nice and easy. We can dive in, we can jump in, we can pick the files we need. It's all ready to go. There's random bits in here that wouldn't go in the portfolio that maybe we would like chuck into a treatment. Um, and we have working files in here as well. We have tear sheets too, all that sort of stuff. So you can like just dive in and get whatever you need. It's all within one place. Like, these aren't going on my website, but sometimes we need these to make a nice treatment. And doing it in Lightroom is better. And because you have to have Photoshop anyway, you might as well use Lightroom for that. Capture One does not get rid of Photoshop. Yes, it has layers and they work very well and all the rest of it. You still need Photoshop to do Photoshop. This is just a tether capture and color grading. The color grading in Capture One is better than the color grading in Photoshop for sure. The tethering in Capture One is better. The export speeds are faster. The import speeds are faster. The whole thing is better but you still need Photoshop. But that's not to say if you've got Lightroom, you can't do a good job, you can. It just takes longer and you have to use Photoshop and Lightroom. There's nothing wrong with Lightroom. It doesn't tether as well, it exports slowly, it doesn't grade as well, but you can get the job done. I'm not saying if you're using Lightroom that you, you know, you've know ruined it, you, you've got to stop and do whatever. You can carry on using Lightroom for sure, but I'm sure you've just seen from this demonstration how much better Capture One is, and I would put money on it that this is a better investment than the camera upgrade. Um, and as you're going crop sensor to full frame, if you're going full frame to full frame, this is where you should spend your money. And yes, it's boring to spend your money on this, but spend it on this, not on a new camera. This will do a better job. You'll get sharper images, more detailed images, better color science is just how it is. So now you've seen this, what do you think? Which software do you think is better? Which one do you think is best? Do you think it's as good as a camera upgrade? I know my thoughts on it. There's a reason we use Capture One. There's a reason we stick with it. And it's not just this. It's also the functionality and the usability, which is insane for professional photographers. It does mean that you need Apple products to work it to its full extent. But again, we'll go into all of that on Studio Access because that is too much for YouTube. Nobody wants to see that here. You want your quick fix? You got your quick fix. Head over to Studio Access for the big detailed one.